Typically, I don't pay attention to college football, at least in season. I usually wait until the offseason for the Vikings has began before I start watching film on college prospects. However, sitting at 1-5, and five, the offseason is far from starting for Minnesota. But in the case of the 2020 season, it's over. It's all about the future at this point. Obviously, the number one priority in next year's draft should be quarterback. And I can't emphasize this enough. If Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman are still here to lead the charge in 2021, then none of what I am about to say matters. However, in the event that they are gone, we are going to go through the top three quarterback prospects in next year's draft, starting with Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. Now, this guy may be the most highly touted quarterback coming out of college since Andrew Luck. I mean, the dude goes through his progression reads like clockwork, senses pressure well, very quick when he moves, and they do those quarterback workouts where they teach you, hey, keep your arms up, much like a fighter. Keep your hands up. That way, you can get rid of the ball quickly, or in the event that you get hit and you don't even recognize the hit is coming, you have a better chance of securing the football instead of fumbling it away. Now, over the course of a four-quarter game, start to get tired, stamina starts to drain out start to get a little lazy the arms start to drop a little bit but in the case of trevor lawrence over a four quarter game he's like this the whole time he can look off defenders with his vision incredible arm great accuracy great touch on his throws very athletic in fact his athleticism allows you to get creative as an offensive play caller this guy is a game changer for whoever the hell ends up with the number one pick in next year's draft. I certainly hope it's the Minnesota Vikings. We now go to Justin Fields, quarterback out of the Ohio State University. Now, this guy is a pure quarterback. And what really sticks out to me the most is that the opposite of Kirk Cousins, when there's a defender in his face, in front of Cousins' face, he goes, ah, he kind of wilts a little bit, ah. Justin Fields, if there's a defender in his face, he knows it's coming, but he stays strong in the pocket and he will still deliver an accurate throw and take that hit. And this guy, he wants to stay in the pocket. He really does. Much like a pro fighter at a bar, but you don't know they're a pro fighter. Somebody's talking shit. I will kick your ass. They're talking to them. And the pro fighter's like, listen, man, I don't want to escalate anything. I want to talk things out. But if we have to throw hands, then so be it. Justin Fields, he wants to stay in the pocket, but he has that extra element of being able to take off with his legs. And in terms of his arm, I think he does a great job of not leaving too much air underneath of his throw so he doesn't throw any duck passes. I think his arm and accuracy is really not that far off from a Trevor Lawrence. The difference is Trevor Lawrence can make up for a bad offensive line. Justin Fields, because his game is so predicated off of patience, smooth criminal, if you will, he needs an average offensive line. If, if Justin Fields were to play behind the Vikings offensive line right now, he would get killed. So you have to address that. Otherwise, Justin Fields, he is a day one starter. And lastly, we go to Trey Lance, quarterback out of North Dakota State. Exciting prospect, super athlete. There's a ton of sexiness to his game. Dangerous when he gets outside the pocket. Great in play action. He's electric when he decides to tuck the football and run with it. And much like the opposite of Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, who are day one starters, I feel like Trey Lance would be better suited getting redshirted his rookie year. I feel like he's a bit of a raw prospect going to the next level. I like to see him do better in his read progressions. He can be a bit run happy and put himself in dangerous situations at times, but he has high upside. Now, I think I'll take it a step further. I would love to have Eric Bieniemy as our next head coach. That is the best case scenario. But in the case of Trey Lance, I almost feel like he would be better suited having Lincoln Riley as his head coach. Either way, opposed to having, what does Mike Zimmer had now? Like 2,200 offensive coordinators at this point? <laughs> we can't have none of that shit. He has tremendous upside. Even though Justin Fields has a higher floor, Trey Lance may have the higher upside. Either way, I'm good with these three prospects. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. We do this three times a week. Mediocre Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Check me out on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. Facebook at Realistic Randy. Next podcast will be Wednesday unless someone gets traded. We'll see you then. <laughs>